Namaste.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. Your sanity of the contract of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You receive the right hand of the Father, receive for us, Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded to all of them. 
There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And then they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still be. According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, to, though the, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The world is full of phoniness. This is the frequent complaint of one of the most popular novels of the 20th century. The world is full of phoniness. This is the most pervasive complaint, the most significant, as many put it on the list, of the novel of the 20th century. And though it's not as cutting edge as it used to be, and not as popular as it used to be, still it sells a million copies every year. This novel, of course, is J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye. People of an older generation remember this novel very well. They would read it probably in school or something. Still, it's very popular. And 48 times, at least, he talks about the phoniness of the world around him. Now, things you could say about this novel, many things, true and false, both. But I think in a general sense, it is true. The world is full of phoniness. We are full of phoniness. The things we often do are full of phoniness which is why we need something real, something authentic. Our nature thirsts for this. Our nature demands this. It needs that to keep its sense of coherence, its finding of truth. And Jesus Christ is that reality, is that authentic quality that transforms, transfigures, grounds our entire existence. 
And we know him through his miracles and apparitions during his lifetime and after. We know him through the gospel, through nature itself in some respects. And we can know him personally. It tells us in today's gospel that this was written, this book was written, this gospel was written, that we may know that he is the son of God, that he is God made man, he is our redeemer, our savior. That will change all of reality. And belief is important to be sure, but to experience the reality of him will help us lead to deep, deeper belief. We have these miracles and apparitions and all these other things these experiences to lead us to him, to know him, to be transformed by him, to live in the truth. Now, all of us have to live in this world. We all play the game as best we can. But we need to know there's something really essential, something profoundly true that transforms, transfigures, and makes our life meaningful, profound, and also eternal. Because the goal is eternal life. This is for a time. At best, it's for a time. Not always a great time. But to know the truth of who we are, of how we should live, of who Christ is, who God is, who we're made for. That's the true knowledge. That's the true insight into reality that will transform everything, make all things doable, the most demeaning, difficult, tedious, phony, etc., etc. We are made to know God, to know him profoundly, intimately. He gives us his apparitions, these signs and wonders. For example, in 1917, in the great apparition at Fatima, when 70,000, 90,000 people saw a phenomenal apparition, a phenomenal miracle, a miracle of the dancing sun. People saw it miles away, in villages miles away. I thought it was the end of the world, and so it was. In many respects, the end of the world. Other things, like today we celebrate again the, the visions, apparitions to Sister Faustina, St. Faustina, Kowalska, the Divine Mercy Sunday. These things that they show us the way to God, how we should live, how we should be transformed, that we're made for something much more, the truth of what we're made for, the authenticity we're made for. But we individually can know God powerfully, personally, palpably, etc. So yes, indications in nature are important. Yes, apparitions and miracles point to something significant that should influence us and what we see around us, we read in the Gospels, etc. But all of us, each of us, can know God personally, powerfully, be touched by the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. Like Thomas, we can put our hands, as it were, to the side of Jesus and know palpably this is the Lord, the risen Lord. The power is there. The infinite power of God is there. Christ, by his death and resurrection, has made possible this infinite power, this extraordinary power, the supernatural power. And there's nothing more real. But if we don't pursue it, it won't come to us. If we don't try to gain it, it will not transform and transfigure us. It can be lost. Hell is a possibility, as well as heaven. Let us use this opportunity, this time we've been given in this life, to be as real as possible, as true as possible, as authentic as possible, as conformed to Jesus Christ as possible, and know the awesome power it will give us. And it will give us awesome power. There's many a time, believe me, I wish it weren't true. It's brought me more suffering, more difficulty, more trials, more whatever than anything out there. I could have had a much more pleasant, comfortable life had I not believed all this stuff was true. Much more comfortable, I can tell you. But it is true. And if it's true, all the difficulties, all the trials, all the temptations, all the, all the things I have to meet in this life, and I meet a lot, a lot of it is phony, I can tell you is doable, possible, and even necessary to have that happiness. We are called to an extraordinary existence. Each of us, you're the most pathetic of us, is called to an extraordinary existence, the supernatural, God himself, to the power of the Holy Spirit, the power our Lord sent by resurrection. And if we become this reality we're made to be, we find the fullness of all life, an abundance of life, beyond imagining, and it's all real. It's all real. It can even be experienced to a great extent here in this life. So yes, the cross brings suffering and difficulty. Yes, all these things will happen to you, bad things, phony things, terrible things. But if we know where we're going and try to utilize all that happens to us, we can take these evil things, these horrible things, these suffering and difficult things, and make them means of our transformation, our transfiguration, our growth in holiness and happiness. 
The supernatural is real. It's the most real thing you'll ever, ever experience. It will make everything beyond imagining, even the most ordinary things. It will transfigure the world for each of us. But there's much to be gotten through along the way. And the more we follow God and pursue God, the more we experience God, the more we'll know this personally and truly. All these other things help us. So now that Fatima really happened, that these extraordinary events that thousands, tens of thousands of people saw really happened, as well as lots of other miracles and other things out there that have pointed to something extra extraordinary, but each of us individually can know the true living God. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. Let us stand and say the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's infinite mercy, let us bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord, who knows our every need. Okay. That the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. That all of us gathered here at Portsmouth Abbey and Portsmouth Abbey School may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God, and especially for John Owen Habib, class of 2020, whose first anniversary of death is this Thursday <coughs> after a fall while hiking in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Let us pray to the Lord. Let me add to that also Father, that Father Christopher continues in good health and good spirits as he celebrates the week, this weekend, his 94th birthday, which was yesterday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful Father, you sent your Son not to condemn the world but to save it. We ask you to hear the prayers and petitions we offer you today for ourselves and for the needs of the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, and renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times we claim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, the Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim... You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, uh, Richard our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the Lord, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, and union in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace, Lord, of you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The masses go, masses ended, go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.